The debt ceiling is constantly being lifted in order to keep the system which runs off of debt moving along. There can be no reduction of debt without a collapse of the system. It's designed to increase and increase and force the taxpayers to pay the bills. And in every single scenario, there is a major controversy surrounding this debt ceiling and the politicians fight each other and in the end the result is always the same more debt you came here for the truth let's look at the debt ceiling today i want to talk about what's happening with the u.s government i want to go into discussions about europe and other places beginning with this you're looking at individual income taxes setting a record through february I like to bring up anytime I see record because we see this all the time. Record debts, record deficits, record you know increases in the stock market. Everything is hitting new highs. That's the bad things and the good things and everything in between. So right here, the federal government collected a record of approximately $600 billion in individual income tax through the first five months of fiscal 2017. There is no doubt that the government is able to bring in record amounts of taxation. I believe though that this money is being squandered and unfortunately we have to have major changes in this category because the amount of money they bring in is not going to do any good if it's bleeding out the other side. Treasury Department is burning through cash as the debt ceiling approaches. So let's get into this here. The Treasury Department has been rapidly spending its large cash reserves ever since Trump took office, a move that compiles, uh, complies with federal law, but also could make it harder for the government to stay under the debt ceiling once it kicks in later this month. So they're talking about how the fact that they have nearly $400 billion in cash on hand. This money will evaporate very quickly. Now, You've seen in the past where the debt stays at a certain level for such a long period of time, and it won't even move a dollar for these you know, weeks and weeks on end. And you know that obviously these numbers are fake, that they're able to manipulate them or they just put off the debt until a later date. They can do this if they really want to. They can show whatever values they desire. So I don't think that a crisis, a true debt ceiling crisis, would ever present itself to be a problem if they choose. However, they may use it as an opportunity right now, judging by the fact that there's a lot of infighting going on in the government. Despite the fact that there is a uh, majority uh, Republican, and obviously the president being a Republican as well, it doesn't seem to make a difference when there's so much infighting occurring. Look at this. The White House budget director confirmed that Trump, uh, Trump's administration will propose, quote, fairly dramatic reductions in U.S. foreign aid in their budget. This is great news, I believe, because the foreign aid is so dramatic in the amount that's spent. Look at the money, the billions of dollars that are sent over to these countries who then use it on munitions, on different weapons and everything else. And then they start uh, wars, start to uh, increase the tensions in these uh, different regions around the world. Just look at the amount of money that's sent over to Israel being one example. I mean, this is going to show you, well, I mean, that's not going to decrease the amount of foreign aid to Israel, but just in general, we need to have our own countries take care of themselves. I know that sounds maybe perhaps a little uh, selfish in some ways, but if you think about it, with such poverty and homelessness going on in the U.S. and Canada, other places, you'll find that if that money was used at home, perhaps that prosperity would then have a ripple effect outwards. So that's what I would hope to see occur. I just think that the uh, fairly dramatic reductions, you know, I would hope that it's something really significant. In fact, um, we'll see. We'll see what happens.
This here is the true situation. There's a lot of news out there and you can read the stats and I do cover the technical analysis and I believe it's important. But when you read something like this, this is what I believe to be the key indicators. This individual here paying $1,900 a month of rent to live downtown San Francisco house with at least 40 other people, many of whom sleep in bunk beds. It's a communal living situation, the Negev, and it's trying to be designed for tech workers. They have a lot of, um, let's say, not a lot of time to be uh, spent at home. They're working a lot. They work perhaps together. They need to uh, be creative, be together, basically a dorm room. That's what they suggest this, that it is. And this is something that is increasing. You'll see this more often. I've covered it here before. They have it in New York. They have it now uh, here, Silicon Valley areas, San Francisco. There is this is not the only one, of course. Now, if individuals want to live together, there's nothing at all wrong with that. Nothing at all to live in a communal situation. However, if they have to live in a communal situation and pay $1,900 a month to do so because they simply can't afford to live on their own, that's the problem. And this is something that has been going on now increasingly for the past few years. People can't afford it. They're renting places that they don't want to live in, but they don't have another choice. That's exactly what's occurring here. M meanwhile, you have people buying these multi-million dollar homes, and then you look just not far away and you see the tent cities. There is the chasm which is formed in between the rich and the poor. It's no longer just a small amount. The middle class is being evaporated. And the new generations, even the millennials and newer, they won't have the same situation that you know, the baby boomers and uh, those generations before had. These opportunities are long gone. And unfortunately, it looks like things are getting a lot worse. We're talking about Greece right now. Two articles here. Greece's international lenders should lower the country's fiscal targets from 2021 onward. I don't understand how much lower they can get. And what they say is excluding debt servicing costs should be lowered to 2% of GDP. This should be a lot lower. I mean, you're not going to get this 3.5% growth that they suggested. I mean, none of these places are getting that. The easing of the primary surplus targets together with the implementation of agreed structural reforms. Uh, that's damaging words would put the necessary conditions in place for a gradual lowering tax rate, positive multiplier effect, okay? They say that we are going to lower taxation on the people. We tried that, it didn't work. So now what we are going to do is have structural reforms. And I do unfortunately believe that that is cutting back on uh, what people have been used to getting, whether or not you agree with it or not. What I say is that anytime you uh, have entitlement reforms or anything else, people will riot. People will unfortunately get in the streets and cause havoc and cause chaos. Then look at this. Greece and its international lenders have the, po have the political will to reach a compromise and conclude a crucial review of the country's bailout progress soon. It's not going to happen. People are not going to accept it. They didn't accept it in 2015. So going ahead with the bailout package is never a good thing for the people. And who are we talking about? None other than the financial goon squad, the IMF. What they said is that the EU and the IMF are going to work on getting Greece's fiscal goals in next year. This is the current rescue program expiring and they need to get on with the new one. That's how it works. You just roll it over into the next one, roll it over, roll it over. And every single time, the austerity kicks in much worse and worse and worse. And there's a stranglehold put on the people. Now, you might think, well, Greece has a problem. It's Greece. They need to deal with their own stuff. But I tell you right now, it's coming. It's not just Venezuela. It's not just Greece. It's not just any one particular country when you have to realize that it's all of them. 
Every country, one degree or another, is facing these problems, and Greece is just giving you that forewarning, that foreshadowing of what's headed to your doorstep. There's a lot more in here, but I'll, let's move on right here before the video gets too long. A lot of people complaining about that. Japan's ruling party approved a change in party rules that could pave the way for the prime minister to become the country's longest serving leader in the post-World War II era. They're talking about, do we need to revise the constitution? Do we want to bring that in? All I wanted to bring up the fact that when the country is headed in such a disaster, it's never been good. Since the crisis it had a few decades ago, it's never recovered, ever. You look at the 100-year mortgages, should that be a cause for concern for anybody? Absolutely not, as long as people feel they're prosperous. Everything is just fine. Look at the fact that you have this aging population, you have the most ridiculous amounts of debt, you have quantitative easing that they're proud of, you have the fact that they are purchasing actual shares, they're buying up all the debt, the central bank is doing something that's unprecedented, never been seen before, you need change. You don't need the same over and over again, but they won't admit to defeat, and that is the problem of Japan. Sources, Paramount's Chinese partners haven't paid a penny of the promised $1 billion. We have some trouble here in Hollywood, and I do believe that there has been a little back and forth, whether it's the capital controls, we don't know what's going on, but I do feel that there is a little bit of controversy going on with the Chinese buying a lot of Hollywood, so let's stay tuned to that. Hundreds of ships are sailing into European waters, check this out, after suspicious maneuvers near terrorist hotspots prompting fears that they are smuggling people and weapons with impunity. So look at this. Investigation by the Times has uncovered how cargo ships and other large vessels routinely switch off their GPS tracking so they can disappear, falsify their ident identification, or veer off their usual course. So it's a whole breakdown of what happens here all i wanted to say was that this is uh definitely interesting it's a, definitely a cause for concern at this time of course we don't know too much detail but this was uh an investigation that was done if you're interested check that out a plan for the coming assault on Raqqa, the Islamic State capital in Syria, calls for the significant U.S. military participation, including more special forces, attack helicopters, artillery, and armed supplies to the Syrian Kurdish and the Arabs fighting force on the ground. And they're also suggesting perhaps we need to put some boots on the ground. I don't know what's going to happen, in that regard, but it's happened in Libya, it's happened in Iraq and Afghanistan. They all started limited operations, and then, of course, it just continues. It just gets worse and worse and worse. The money just gets poured in and poured in, and then, of course, there's the backlash. You bomb these countries, and people get pissed off. And I wouldn't blame them in that regard. I just think that, you know, we have to stop this. We have to stop bombing the boogeyman. It's not going to work. If you stop, if you want to stop it, I've got a great idea. I've got a bright idea. Stop funding it. Stop funding and training ISIS. Stop allowing this to take hold. You're giving them the power, and they've even admitted it before. Even Hillary, Hillary Clinton said, yes, in fact, we have given weapons to these people. Of course, she didn't use those names exactly, but that's what she's talking about. The people we're fighting today are those we funded. It's very clear. It's it's not, you know, they're not going to come out and say, you know, Washington Post says uh, we fund ISIS. No, but you piece them together and realize the, the truth. It's pretty obvious. It's pretty clear. And it has been made public. If you found this video informative, please give me a thumbs up. And last but not least, if you found the video informative, I know you will find my book, The Money GPS, even more informative. So, you can look through the book. Just go over to Amazon. They have a look inside feature that will allow you to flip through the pages of the book and see if you like it. Take care.